Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 25th, 2020, recorded around 2.27 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have a couple of things ongoing. First of all, in the top uh, kind of right screen here, we have the circulation associated with what will soon be the remnant circulation of Hurricane Epsilon, which is now pulling away uh, from well away from Bermuda, well away from the Canadian Maritimes. This is ongoing a transition to a very powerful extratropical cyclone across the North Atlantic and will affect Ireland and uh, portions of the United Kingdom uh, into early and mid next week. Now across the Caribbean here, we are also watching newly designated Tropical Storm Zeta, which is the 27th named storm of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. And this is expected to become a hurricane over the next few days as soon as it uh, nears the Yucatan Peninsula. For that reason, there is a hurricane watch in effect. After it crosses the Yucatan, it is expected to kind of move into the western Gulf of Mexico where it can make landfall in Louisiana as a strong tropical storm or low-grade hurricane as we progress through the middle of next week. If we look here at a closed-in visible satellite imagery here for a tropical storm Zeta, we have a couple of very important things ongoing this afternoon. First of all, the storm is still relatively disorganized at this time. It is not very well organized at the moment. And one of the ways we can see that is the low level rotation seems to be maximized on the northern side of this big giant area of convection. We can see that that has kind of been occurring. Now, we also may have a secondary area of spin, probably the mid-level circulation down here in this deep convection and if that could end up getting uh, itself down to the surface, this could uh, imply track changes and intensity changes uh, as this progresses towards the north and west here. Again, a further north uh, cor you know, correlation here would mean this spends less time over the landmass here, while a uh, southern track here would favor a longer time over portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, which this is important going forth down the road. Now, again, this is going to take a little bit of time still to consolidate. It's going to take more than at least another 12 hours to try to consolidate and complete that transfer process from low pressure area to low pressure area. And the hurricane hunters are in there right now, and we'll get a better understanding of what they found uh, within the next couple of hours. Now, if we look at the GFS forecast, it's the 200 millibar wind flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And again, we see right now, again, this is valid as of 2 p.m. this afternoon, so about half an hour ago, a very large, uh, rather large anticyclonic flow across most of the Western Caribbean at the moment. You can see this large uh, anticyclonic flow across most of the Western Caribbean. And this is important because it is helping to ventilate the storm a little bit. However, there is a mid-level ridge that we cannot see here on this particular uh, map that is inducing a little bit of northerly shear, which has helped to actually push some of this convection away from the center of circulation, which is believed to be somewhere up in here. So this is believed to be where the center is. The thunderstorms is displaced from that by a little bit. It's not a very significant margin, but it is enough to kind of keep this area broad and disorganized. Again, it's still a pretty elongated area of vorticity, so there could be multiple true centers in that area, and it's something that we're going to have to watch going forth with time here. Now, if we look here, uh, we progress forward with time. This is the 12Z run here of the GFS. So this is 36 hours from now. This is by late tomorrow night, by 8 p.m. tomorrow evening, or 0Z, zero Zulu time Tuesday, this would technically be Tuesday, Zulu time, uh, we can start to see that the pattern is beginning to change a little bit as what's starting to happen here is the anticyclonic flow becomes rather well established across the storm environment and the storm has its own generated outflow pool and it is becoming deeper in the atmosphere passing pretty much over the western part or the very far northeastern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. And again, this is very important. Now you can see where the storm is right now compared to there. It kind of jumps northward. And from there, the storm just kind of trends on a northwesterly direction. 
Now, this is very important because if, again, a center reforms further towards the south, it is uh, slightly more involved with the land uh, mass here of the Yucatan Peninsula. And then once it comes out here, it's a weaker storm from that land interaction. And then once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it, it could try to change maybe a little bit more in the westerly direction. However, if models like the H-Wharf and GFS are correct, uh, this would tend to go on a further northerly direction that starts to lift further towards the north. And then from there, once it enters the Gulf of Mexico, it's able to pivot uh, more easily uh, around the ridge here that's going to be building in, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Now, once it enters the Gulf of Mexico, this is the GFS forecast uh, by early Wednesday or very, er very late Tuesday into early Wednesday. And again, what you can see right now is the storm is still under this upper level anticyclone, but there's a couple of things that are changing now. First and foremost, we have this big trough that's digging in across the United States right now. And basically the trough axis extends from about New Mexico and Arizona all the way through portions of the Northeast or up through the Midwest rather. And this jet axis is stretching all the way out towards the Northeast United States. It's causing a big jet maximum region. Well, out, out ahead of that in the right front exit region, uh, which is basically this area in through here, this is the right front exit region, you're getting a lot of strong southwesterly vertical wind shear out of this direction. And as the storm, as the storm is starting to approach this environment, that shear is now starting to encroach on that storm environment. And what starts to happen is you can get a little bit more southwesterly vertical wind shear, which does start to happen here by early Wednesday. The storm is moving still towards the north-northwest here before curving around. But before doing so, it's entering a pretty high shear environment uh, across this region. That's some pretty decent shear. And that would start to uh, tear the storm apart. And that's going to be one of the things that we're going to have to look for. And again, eventually this kind of scoots on, but it's dealing with a lot of that southwesterly vertical wind shear. And you can see this anticyclone becomes now displaced and it's only adding to that vertical shear. So what starts to happen is you get a storm that's now heavily sheared going into the Gulf Coast states. Now, this could be good, but it could also still leave a lot of impacts, especially from tornadoes, you know, flash flooding, still a big concern, storm surge, etc. These are still very real concerns and the danger is not over just because this might be weakening on approach. But if we jump this back here, if we look at previous runs here, the trough has actually been a little bit slower in previous runs and again you can kind of see that from the 60 uh from the from the 60 to the 12z so the shear is a little bit more backed off and the storm is a little bit stronger on approach and that's very important going forth with time now if we look at the steering pattern in the mid levels of the atmosphere this is the 500 millibar vorticity or the basically you're looking at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere and we're looking at the vorticity field now, a couple of uh, hours ago, or a couple of days ago, rather, we had the shortwave energy, as we were talking about yesterday, we had a shortwave uh, trough located over Alabama, and this was only in the mid-levels, so this wasn't down necessarily at the, the higher altitudes or lower altitudes, but this was mid-level. And this mid-level energy has now scooted over into the southwestern Atlantic Basin, we can see uh, running it all the way up to uh, now, this is kind of this energy has none of the less uh, coalesced out here in the southwestern Atlantic Basin. At the very same time, we also have a ridge starting to build back over from this part over portions of Mexico, and we've now started to see that ridge begin to slide over with time. And we can see that on the GFS forecast, uh, by the next 36 hours or so, we start to see a difference. Uh, where we now have a ridge positioned over Florida right now. Now, this ridge ultimately is going to try to create the steering flow out of the northwesterly direction, forcing the storm into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico at this time, into the central and southwestern Gulf. Now, you can start to see, as we go out to hour 60, this trough is now entering the pitcher over across portions of New Mexico and Texas, but this ridge across Florida is still here, and you can see the very faint outline of that right here. 
So the storm can't just necessarily move straight northward. It's trying to round this ridge. So rounding this ridge here over the next few days, it's going to have to kind of come out something like that. And then eventually as this trough breaks down, it's going to move, or as this ridge breaks down, it's going to move something none of us like that. Now this trough, again, you, you can see it's being more so positioned out towards the west at this time. So your natural weakness in the ridge is right about here. So the storm for the last couple of hours of its duration is going to have to make a turn towards the north and east as the trough eventually slides to the northeast. This ridge begins to break down. Our storm has to start to turn at some point towards that direction. And it's going to be very crucial because when a storm does that is going to be very crucial. So you've got a basically a ridge out here your weakness, your trough in through here, and your storm is now going to have to make that turn in the final hours before landfall. Now, where exactly this does it is going to be very important. The GFS solution is passing this right near the Alabama-Mississippi-Florida border. And that's very important because, again, some of the model runs have this going uh, more towards portions of, you know, western Louisiana, Marseille, uh, instead of the or the Alabama Mississippi Florida border, so there's a lot of considerable uncertainties here going forth with time as to how exactly this is going to play out. Now, if we look here at the GFS 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity product, we can also see a couple of very time, a couple of which we're going to discuss right now. Uh, we can see that what happens here in the short term uh, is that we are actually starting to get uh, a lot of dry air across the Gulf of Mexico right now. You can see this very uh, big amount of dry air positioned over the Gulf of Mexico at this time, and that is going to be staying there for a while. Now, you can see the storm finally tried to pull up here uh, on Tuesday, and again, there's still a lot of dry air hanging around in this vicinity. So any storm that is here is naturally going to try to ingest this dry air into its circulation. And we can start to see that happen in the final hours before landfall here, uh, that the storm actually now is ingesting some of that dry air. You can see a lot less green here and a little bit more in the way of lighter green and uh, brown shades here entering the western side of the circulation. Now, what you can also see is we have a lot of green to the eastern side here, and this is suggesting that this is going to probably be a lopsided storm, mainly on the easterly direction. So even if this doesn't make landfall in the Florida Panhandle, you're still going to get a stream of moisture being pumped up here from the Caribbean and the Gulf. And again, these water temperatures are still very warm to support thunderstorms across this general area. So this is going to be one thing to watch as we go forth with time. And even again, if the storm does not make landfall there, this slug of moisture is going to be pumped in. And that could cause, in its own rate, a flooding concern over the next couple of days. Now, again, if we look at the HORF sea surface temperature uh, profile here, we can see a couple of very important things here. Uh, that as we go forth with time, and this enters the Gulf of Mexico again, water temperatures remain very warm. But there is a stable shallow layer in through here. And if we look actually at the uh, upper ocean heat content map here, this is the upper ocean heat content for the Gulf of Mexico uh, generated as of yesterday. And you basically notice where there's a relative lack of upper ocean heat content. Now, uh, anywhere generally within this area has a pretty high amount of upper ocean heat content. So as the storm uh, eventually transverses through this area and then enters into the Gulf of Mexico, it is going to have a pretty favorable environment uh, upper ocean heat content wise for the first day or two. Uh, after that point though, once it really uh, crosses about 25 degrees north, it is going to start to run into virtually zero upper ocean heat content through here and through the rest of its journey uh, as it starts to make that turn, it's not going to uh, really impact have any significant upper ocean heat content to work with and that's going to be one of the factors that is likely to be weakening the storm now again there's still considerable uncertainty as to where the storm is going to be down the road and again you can see here that on the gefs ensembles 
the ensemble means sea level pressure, we can see that there's a very large spread from all the way in the southern Gulf here on Wednesday morning to all the way inland or even potentially uh, further towards the east here of New Orleans. And again, landfall could be anywhere from the Florida Panhandle all the way back to over portions of central Louisiana. So there's a large amount of uncertainty going forth with time. Now, the official Hurricane Center forecast, again, does have this. A tropical storm for the next couple of days becoming a hurricane uh, probably by the time it gets to the Yucatan Peninsula or just thereafter becoming a hurricane on Tuesday. And then after that, remaining a hurricane through Wednesday and approaching the Louisiana coastline here, making landfall somewhere near New Orleans or near the Mississippi-Alabama-Florida line and then coming inland and remaining a tropical uh, cyclone through Thursday uh, morning. So again, a lot of uncertainty going forth with time. Florida is not out of the question, but mostly for South Florida and the Florida Peninsula, the only impacts seem to be maybe some heavy rain here uh, over the next several days. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, your afternoon, and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.